What up, this is Billy. Uh, today I just wanted to get into a quick story that's a little personal, but I hope I can weave it together with some stuff and hopefully it makes some sense. I grew up without my dad. I didn't know him at all. Uh, and I reconnected with him when I was around, I think 27, 28. You know, he reached out and then I took an opportunity, went down to Antigua, which is where he lives and got to know him better. Sometimes I see a story or hear a story about somebody who's gone through all these incredible lengths to reconnect with their biological parents. And sometimes I kind of like, I'm a bit confused by that because it's just not my story at all. I was really never deeply interested. I just was like, yo, this is, this is my life. I'm gonna do what I need to do. I wanna talk about the third time I saw my dad, which was um, a couple of months later, that entire side of the family who I really didn't know at all, people I hadn't seen since I was four years old or five, uncles and cousins. How you doing? Uh, they're having a kind of a family reunion in Miami. So I'm like, wow, okay. Take a trip down to Miami. Dozens of new family members, people who remember me that I don't really remember, but I'm, I'm excited to be there. And we're chilling at one of my aunt's homes. It's this beautiful house and I'm looking around, all this art. My father and his sister, they're outside in the back and I hear like something crash, I hear something fall to the ground, and I hear my aunt start crying, sobbing, crying. And I walk over and I'm trying to figure out what's, what's going on and I kind of like slink my head out and I'm like, is everything okay? And I see her, you know, head in hand, like on the table crying. She sees me there and she becomes immediately very upset, right? This is not what she wants her nephew, her long lost nephew to see is her crying, you know? so she. She comes over and she starts to explain, but she can't even, she's beside herself. She can't even stop crying. My father looks at me and he goes, I was telling a joke. Basically my dad had made a joke about some, sometime when he was a kid, when he was getting beat bad by his father, my grandfather. And you know, all the sisters who were older than him either had to witness it or they sat in the room in the back and waited till he came back and, and, and had to kind of just all deal with that, right? They're all in a state of torment and fear around this man, you know? And I, the way I look at it, you know, he's probably telling a joke at the same time. There's a lot of truth and jest, we know about that. Maybe he was trying to float something as a joke. And my mom, I mean, my aunt, you know, was triggered by it and, and felt this insurmountable guilt. So she starts, you know, she's crying and working through the tears, but she's also explaining, she's like, and we would, there were times where he would beat him so bad in the skin, he would have his skin peeled off of his back and we would try to help and da da da. And, um, and I started to cry. I started to feel so bad. There was so much pain. By the way, my dad at this time, we're talking 72, I think. And so she's maybe a little older than him. So 74, 76. We're talking about people in their 70s who haven't been able to address this. This is unspoken, unaddressed, unresolved trauma. And I just, I became overwhelmed with it too. And I, I, I went in and tried to hug everybody and I, I didn't know what to do. You know, I, I really didn't belong there, kind of. You know, it was like something that, something they needed to, to work out. But, you know, he floats this joke out after 60 years and it creates an incident. How many traumas of this kind are just sitting there to, to first even talk about it, much less actually deal with it, much less actually resolve with it, resolve it to feel, to find peace with it. How many, how many people have lived and died without finding peace for these traumas, for the difficulties that the world puts on them? And there's no peace. It's just existing. Eventually, you know, I, I walked away and I let them continue talking for a few more hours. Um, and we had a great time. There were other things. We met with other members of the family and got to chill with my cousins. And so I had a great time. I want to say that it wasn't like, that wasn't the centerpiece of the weekend, but it was a pivotal one. And it caused me to think. The lesson I took from that had, there were twofold. It was one, it was like, be kind. Cause I don't know what people are going through, what they're suffering. I don't know if they're coping well with what they're suffering. I don't know if they're even aware of what they're suffering, you know, the ways that it shows up in their thought processes and their behaviors. And the second one was an acknowledgement of like the power I have. Like what, what motivated my grandfather? What motivated my grandfather to be that type of person? Why would he do that to his son? He was probably going through something himself, you know? 
he was probably struggling through this world as well with this experience comes home and releases all this anger on his son in a terrible way in a way that harms two lives that creates serious trauma those are just two what about the other eight children who also went through it and have been harboring feelings of guilt and anxiety and pain and and trying to deal with it for decades later because of a choice because of a choice someone made it's like yo i recognize that some of these gender norms are aren't productive and, and people might beef with me on this but i have a conception of masculinity in my head and to me a big part of masculinity is is control and restraint the ability to channel energies in ways that are productive like this world is nuts can you organize it and then project something dope out back out something positive my father is a complex person just like you and i are and every single person you meet is a complex person who has a complex backstory a series of traumas and thoughts and difficulties and experiences that have led them to whatever moment that you that you're sharing with them that led them to this moment and it's like, yo, how can we heal? How can we heal? And how can we grow? I think we have to communicate. And I think we have to give each other space to be who we are. And we can create a world where we encourage truth and reality. And when we do that, I think we'll have a totally different world, you know?